Stephen, uh, in addition to President Newton, who you already mentioned, yes. we have apologies in writing from Director Warren McDonald, yeah. VP Garfield Winters off the island, as well as Treasurer Alvin Lewis. Those are the ones I have now. Thank you. All duly noted, and, and we appreciate when club members actually send in their, their apologies. So it you know it indicates that they really want to be here, but um, they've taken the time and effort to indicate to the club that due to circumstances, many times beyond their control, they can't be attend. So um, you know, just a word to all our members. We, you know, if you can't make it, just give us a little message either to myself, President Newton, um, Secretary Willis. So we know you're out there. We know that you you want to attend, but for some reason you can't make it. So it's most appreciated when you send in your apologies. So moving quickly ahead, um, like I said, this evening, we're going to have a, a discussion about Haiti and a dissection of, of why what's going on there in, in Haiti and why it has got there and what are the maybe the possible solutions to the, this ongoing um, crisis in Haiti. Um, so before we go into our main event, though, I do have as um, two other items. We're going to do some um, Kiwanis education as well as recognition of birthdays and anniversaries. So when I looked actually on the club list, there were no Kiwanians, um, Kiwanian clubs of Kingston members who have birthdays or anniversaries this week. So I'm going to ask if there's anybody who what we inadvertently may have forgotten their birthday. That is, that's, that's for this week, March, March 19th to the 26th. Is there anybody who's celebrating a birthday or an anniversary that they'd like to share with us? Birthday greetings. No, no. So if not, I will just share share with you when I did my research. There are two famous musicians who celebrate their birthday um, today. Jamaican musicians, Lee Scratch Perry. If you happen to watch the Bob Marley um, One Love movie recently, you would have seen that he had a a small part in that movie and he is born March 20th, 1936, as well as Ken Booth, famous crooner and reggae singer. He was born on March 22nd, 1948. So if you were born um, around that time, you're in good company. But if not, um, so be it. Uh, President, right. President Mike, Stephen? Yes, yes, yes. I yes, believe you you did mention DP Jeff Misada's birthday last week, but he in fact did celebrate his birth or is celebrating his birthday today. It's today. DP uh, Jeff Misada. Yes. DP Jeff, um, happy birthday to you. I hope that you see many, many more and and most importantly are in good health. Because uh, it's one thing to have um celebrate a birthday, but if you're not well, then it's of negligible value. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> mm -hmm. Special special um birthday greetings to DP Jeff. Hope he's celebrating it well. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move now to the next item on the agenda, which is Kiwanis education. And I have our very own DLG Desmond, who is um going to share some wisdom, some gems of Kiwanis with the, the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, President. Yes, President elect um Stephen. And it's 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 LG, not DLG yet. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Fellow Kiwanians. That, that that's okay. Um fellow Kiwanians and guests, SLP members. The topic is on the annual general meeting. The purpose of the annual general meeting is to elect your officers and directors and hear annual reports from your president, secretary and the treasurer as per article 3.3 of the standard form for club bylaws AGM must be held during a regular club meeting between April 1 and May 15 and 30, 30 days prior notice must be given the, the process is as follows Five weeks in advance of the AGM, the president appoints a nominating committee to make nominations and prepare a ballot to elect the new board of directors. Two weeks in advance, 
the nominating committee submits a list of nominees to the president for officers with no more than two nominees for each office and for directors. No more than the number of director positions to be filled, plus three. The president-elect is the sole candidate for president nominated by the committee. One week in advance, nominations from the floor may be made from, for any position to be filled. At the election meeting, volunteers will be appointed to prepare the ballot, count the votes, and certify the results. Additional nominations from the floor may be made at this meeting. As per Article 3.5 of the bylaws, the quorum is one third of the members in good standing, and at least a majority of the members present and voting is required to approve all business unless otherwise provided in the bylaws or club policy. And that's it for Kiwanis Education present. Stephen, thank you. President elect. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank, you, thank you, LG Desmond. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, th thank you for that, Kiwanis Education. Um, and uh, all the kids who are here, um, please make sure that your AGM is, is scheduled accordingly based on those, those guidelines. Um, I noticed since I started that some um, Kiwanis Club of Portmore members are here. I would like them, if they would like to introduce themselves and their delegation, quite a few has come on board. I don't know who the head of the delegation is, the DP Donnell or, or Wayne. Okay. Thank you for the invitation. And it's our pleasure joining with you this evening. I have special attachment to ET. Okay. So I really want to know what's happening. And presently, I think we're about five in numbers. And I'm DP okay. Donnell. Thank you, DP Donnell. Are you willing to share what your connection is? Is, is it that you have family there or, or you're a part Haitian? No, well, right after the earthquake, I went down as a contractor. I oh. spent two years down there. So you know that give me special, you know, attention, you know, mm -hmm. and attachment. Yes, and a connection. And, and you have seen exactly how, what life is like there. You have yes, man. You know, yes. I see. So I had some good experience with even the same kind of riot that takes place or the chaos that is taking place now. Yes. You know, so it's an experience, yes. I must say. Yeah, so so we look forward to your, your insight when um DP Stewart is is the, 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 the no discussion. Problem. So thank you again for no attending. And and All I know right. there are quite a few a lot of people who are connected to Haiti through the the military, the armed forces over the years, um, Jamaica sent quite a few number of JDF troops as well as Coast Guard to assist Haiti when they had the earthquakes and other natural disasters. So there are quite a lot of Jamaicans who who uh, who understand the plight of Haiti and would like to do whatever they can to try and, and uh, resolve and to help them in one way or another. So with that, um, I'm going to move right into our feature presentation or main event or discussion. And I'm going to hand over to DP Stewart to, to, to explain what, how the format will be and what the nature of the discussion will be. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, PE Stephen. And let me just say a welcome to all of the members present, Kiwanians or not, but Kiwanians and guests included. This even the, what I had in mind was I'm gonna do um a presentation and then I'm gonna invite um participation, you know, following. So that that's that's the format. I wanna start by saying that the earthquake in 2010 in Haiti was something that opened my eyes. Um, at that time, 
No, I, I can't. I, I'm going to quote somebody. I'm going to. I, I used to listen to talk shows in Jamaica for a time. And I remember Wilmot Perkins, right? And he never ever had anything good to say about Haiti. And then when I, at the time, I didn't know much about, about um, Haiti, other, other than the superficial stuff, you know, they are part of the Caribbean and we play football with them and so on and so on. But what, when, the, when the earthquake came, that is the first time I heard discussions about the, that Haiti was forced to pay reparations to France. Now, you know, one would think if I, if you enslave me and I free myself, then you, you really owe me because of what you took from me and you were exploiting me. But France turned it on its head and said, no, um, you, you by, by freeing yourself, you stole my property, meaning France's property, and you owe me. Now, let's go back to how it started. This, the, 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 Haiti, the Haitian Revolution ended in 1804. The revolution itself ended in 1804. That is when, that is when France, I mean, Haiti was able to declare um, independence. But it didn't just happen in one year or two years. It took about, I think it took about 13 years. I can't remember the exact number. But it took up quite a few years before the French actually surrendered and withdrew their troops. Now, fine. What, what was the response of the West? The response of the West was, we will not recognize you. We will not allow you to trade with us. We're not gonna, you're not going to be part of, 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 of the world. In, in other words, you, are, you don't exist. You technically don't exist. And it took, it took, for example, it took the U.S. 60 years after Haiti's independence to recognize Haiti. And, and, and that's one of the th reasons why they, they didn't recognize or didn't want to recognize Haiti is because they, would be, they thought that it would give encouragement to, to their, the slaves they had in the South about trying to do something similar. Now, there's also the, a link between the French Revolution and the Haitian Revolution. The French Revolution, I think, was two years earlier. And it stirred up a lot of discussion about freedom and rights and so on. And France tried to repress this. And in, in a sense, you could almost say that that was a kicker in terms of um, motivating the, um, the, the, the Haitians to revolt. You know, in, in other words, I mean, the process probably had started, but it was also a, a, a little fillip in terms of them deciding hey, we have to free ourselves. Now, one, I'm, I'm sure there must have been a lot of celebration. This would have been the first African country to um or the first slave country slave this was the first slave revolt let me put it that way where the slaves actually ended up winning but because of the response um and haiti want wanting to be a part of the of trade and so on they were feeling the pressure it was in 1825 remember this was in 1804 which is actually 220 years from now if, if you know you, you can do the maths, but in 1825, France sent gunboats or you know ships with you know weapons and everything to the shores of Haiti, and this is when they demanded. It was I think King Charles or I think or I'm not I can't remember the name of that that particular king, but the king who was ruling at the time, who had who said, this is um um. This is what you have to pay us. And the original figure was 150 million francs. That was the original figure, which at the time was about 21 billion US dollars in today's money. Obviously, Haiti didn't have the money. They weren't even able to trade on the worldwide. They had the potential to earn, but they ended up borrowing money and they borrowed money from US banks, French banks, and German banks 
in order to, to, to start paying for this, for, for this debt. Because they realize that without this and without the recognition and being able to trade, they, they just couldn't do anything. Prior to this, remember, Haiti was the most prosperous country in the Caribbean in terms of what France was earning from it. Sugar and um, I think coffee were, were some of its main exports and it was supplying most of Europe with, with, with sugar. I guess Jamaica came around a bit after that. So the, Haiti was basically forced to yield and yield they did. Now, it took Haiti almost 150 years to pay off that debt. It's not until 1947 when they actually finished paying off the debt. And when one considers that with the interest costs, which were exploitative, exploitative it, they paid a lot more than even the original debt. I think France in, subsequently reduced the amount from 150 million francs to, to 90 million francs. But eventually, in 1947, it was all paid. Now, one can imagine that if you are, if 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 you're sucking all of this money out of a country, where are they gonna have money to invest in infrastructure, um, healthcare, education? It's just not gonna be there, right? So that is a key point to remember in th thinking about what is happening now. But then. Let's fast forward to 1915. In fact, let's start in 1914. In 1914, the US was a little bit concerned because Germany and France were still exerting influence in what they considered as their backyard. And you know, because they were, Haiti had borrowed money from, from, from France and Germany as well, they were, get, they were getting a piece of the action. And, he, you know, the U.S. really wanted to put a stop to that. Um, they then moved in in 1915 and occupied occupied Haiti. And that went on for, I think it was at a 13 or, or I, I'll give you the dates. I'll give you the period a little later. But that's, it started in 1915. Now, they, they basically, they're, they're reason was that they wanted to protect their interests they want that the, it, it was to protect their interests and but why i mentioned 1914 in 1914 this is before the occupation the marines actually marched into the the, the, the national bank of haiti and basically took the gold that haiti had 500,000 us dollars worth of gold was just stole, stolen. I mean, there was never no, no pretense about it. They just went in, took the gold, and they and this gold basically ended up with the on Wall Street. And in fact, what was the precursor to Citibank? I think the national, the national. I think it had a name, the National Bank of. I don't remember the full name, but it was the precursor to to what we now know as Citibank. Was one of the main beneficiaries either through the loans that they had sent to, um, lent to Haiti, as well as receiving this kind of money, the, the gold deposits. So there are, you, you're going to see as we go along, a lot of people, a lot of tentacles are being, people are getting their fingers into Haiti. Now, why, why is Haiti so important? Or, or what was so important? Is it just to, because... Um, you know, is their backyard? No, no, it's a little bit more than that. Um, I'm gonna. My timelines are not gonna necessarily follow us chronologically, but you, you, it will come together in the end. Um, so for these years now, from 1915, um, and I'll I'll tell you quickly when that ended. Um. Yeah, 1937. Right. And this is when this American and to be honest, what they what they did in that period of time, they basically just took over the country. Can, can you imagine Jamaica? I mean, you know, we, we, we do we, we, we say what we <laughs> negative things we have to say about our British rule. But the two 
couple of things the British didn't do to us. They didn't force us to pay up. Well, we didn't we didn't fight and overthrow them. But you know, the point is that we 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 didn't we 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 didn't they didn't try to do to us what France did to um to 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 Haiti. And also they didn't come in and take over the country. You know, they may have had their methods of um trying to get the first first in line for investment opportunities and so on, which which we can understand. However, the the the, the occupation in 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 Haiti in, in, by the by the U.S. was brutal. Some of the things that they actually did in that in the country were just really unimaginable. In fact, wages is one thing that comes up, and it's it's still a factor today. There are a lot of there are a lot of factories in Haiti, a lot of factories. And the, the name goes on and on if you if you were to listen to the names. I think Coca-Cola, there's Pepsi, um, there are Canadian companies. And one of the things that attracts them to baseballs, for example, I'm sure you all know baseballs are, are Haiti is one of the main places that baseballs are made. Um, there's a Canadian company that produces uh, has a big t-shirt business. It's uh, it's in Haiti. Now what they, they have done in Haiti is repressed wages. Uh, any, any appeal. There have been protests where this, the, the people wanted to increase their minimum wage. And the response of the police, and, this, and probably it would have been Haitian police, was brutal. I mean, I'm not talking about batons. I'm talking about bullets, right? So right now, in fact, I even saw where Barack Obama was instrumental in telling the Haitian people, no, you can't move your minimum wage from $2 a day to $5 a day. And in fact, Aristide, who we'll talk about a little later, that was one of the things that he that got him exiled. Because he 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 became he was president for, for more than one term it was. But in the in the final term, one of the things that he wanted to do was increase the minimum wage. And also he had he had said to France that you need to pay us reparations. And that was one of the things that just made he had to go. And and this is this is <laughs> what I find amazing is that this the people come into your country and just do what they want. And and there's a history of this in Haiti. So you have a you have a population who is suffering. They're not earning a lot. They they there are no um there's no, the resources aren't there to to really develop the country, and Haiti is really at the mercy of of the Americans. And even after the Americans left the um left the they were no longer occupying the country, the control still remained. Now let's go a little further to to um the era of Papa Doc. You all know about Papa Doc. He came to power in um. 19, uh, I think that was, I soon tell you, I think it was the early 50s, 50, or the late 50s, I think it was about 57 or so on. And he, yes, his, yes, 54 thereabouts. And he, um, yes, I was right about 57. He, one of the reasons, now the US propped up Papa Doc, he was a brutal dictator. He, he created um, death squads to, to eliminate people who, up, who opposed him. And one of the reasons why the U.S. was comfortable with him was that with the Cuban Revolution in 1959, Papa Doc was anti-communist. So they had an interest in maintaining him because at least he was anti-communist and they didn't want to see another Cuba in, in, in their hemisphere. So this is how they, they reasoned it out. So no matter what Papa Doc was doing to the people, that was not of any concern, you know? And, you know, time and time again, you hear American politicians talk about um, the importance of democracy. You have to ask yourself, are they really interested in democracy? Because when, for example, Aristide was elected in 1990, 
right? He was the one, he won about six or seven percent of the vote, and he was he was the one he, that he was not the one who the Americans wanted to win, and they were quite surprised and you know frustrated at the fact that he won, and there was a coup in in 1991 which removed Aristide. Now there was a period of unrest when um after that period and he was actually brought back f subsequently in fact that's when he served his first full term you could say in 19 um let me just get that date for you to, so we follow the sequence um okay i'll have to come back to that yes that was 94 right he came back in 94 to 96 and what is interesting is that his wish list in terms of his agenda were things like, you know, improving literacy, health care, um, all the things that a progressive government would want for, the, for their people. So, but now, um, also doubling the minimum wage was also on his agenda. Now, apparently his constitution had said that um you can't serve two consecutive terms you could come back and run again after a break so he 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 only served that one term um or that one period but then in 2001 he came back again and he served up to 2004 now in 2004 is the period when um he wanted to make the he was demanding reparations from France Etc. Etc. And the the Marines just came in, basically scooped him up, and flew him to the Congo. This is Central African Republic, um, the Congo. He's not. He wasn't even from there. He has never been. He had never been there before. But that's how they got rid of him. And you have to say, and, and the fact is, why I asked about democracy, the U.S. and their real, if they're real interest in democracy. That first election in 1990 was the first free, fair, and honest election that Haiti had ever had. Haiti had ever had. So you have to wonder what really it, in America is interested in is their interests. And anytime their interests are, are, are threatened or are, are, are the interests of their the companies, the American companies in these places, then they they act on it, and that was really what happened in the case of 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 Aristide. Now, another thing to 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 point out, another thing that feature of the of the French constitute of the Haitian Constitution was that it said, "No, it actually said no white man shall own property in Haiti, and shall." Um, be a boss. I mean, that, that's that's how the language was 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 written. And when they during the occupation, the 1915 to 1937 occupation that we spoke about, America just took it and changed it. And in fact, FDR, the famous and who many people revere as one of the greatest U.S. presidents, he boasted that he actually rewrote the French, the Haitian Constitution. And they obviously, you know, I mean, how how you can tell me that we can't own property in Haiti? No man, that that don't make any sense, at least to the Americans. So he actually boasted that he rewrote the constitution, and it's just a series of steps. You know, if we we have a saying in Jamaica, take liberty with you, and and so on, a series of taking liberty with them, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you end up with a country, and then not to forget, you know, so there have been other, all right, let me finish with Duvalier. Duvalier died in 71, I think. And then he was, he, he, he was taken, baby doc, you know, he was 19 years old, took over. And he also uh, appointed himself president for life as his father had done. And, but he had to flee in, 
Let me just get that that um period correct. He had to flee after a period of time, and they got rid of him. So Haiti has actually had had its own situations because I think they have had about forty five leaders from the time of their independence to, and about half twenty over twenty have ended up uh, losing by by some form of intervention like coups. And I, I guess not all of them would necessarily have been blamed on external powers, but a lot of them were because when the, the, the superpowers didn't want this particular person to be in charge, then they arranged to, to get them out. And that was the easiest way to get them out. So it is when you come coming down to this period and I know a lot of people are hearing about these gangs that are in Haiti. Now, remember, I'm sure if you remember, if you are old enough to remember anything about Papa Doc, one of the things he did, he I, mem I mentioned his death squad. The death squad and the persons, the name of that group of people were Tantan Makuta or something like that. Now, the, 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 the forces, the armed forces in, in Haiti were actually trained by the U.S. They were trained by the U.S. So that, that's when about that time they came into being. And then the Americans later on, after they, after they had free and fair elections, began to worry that the armed forces were, might become a threat and, and overthrow what they have put in place. And they encouraged Aristide to disband the military. And that is, and he did, he did disband the military. Now, along comes these gangs that are being styled as gangs. And one of the things you, 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 when you hear what these people say, they remember that, that um, Aristide didn't have any guns, right? Aristide didn't have any guns. He couldn't protect himself. He couldn't prevent himself from being overthrown, right? So they are obviously not going to let that same thing happen to them in terms of their power base. So hence the guns. But where are they getting the guns from? Where are they getting the guns from? The way Haiti has operated is that the bourgeoisie have usually used these gangs. And remember, after the Tantan Makut, after the Valiers ended, they obviously you had you had these people who were accustomed to doing you know awful things and they had to find something else to do so i'm not so so it's clear that some of that spillover were the people who probably are now around not necessarily from that age group but i mean it passed on that kind of lawlessness didn't just disappear because um papa doc and baby doc had, had moved on so there is that that formed that kind of a nucleus for for this for this kind of situation now in terms of i want to make this point in terms of they they worked they they have worked for the bourgeoisie right and they have worked for the politician and the politicians so they have been the, these gangs as they have called them ha, have been the victim of being used and they have realized that they have been used by both the upper classes and and the politicians and that is what so, some of them now are rebelling against it, it the, the, the 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 most famous of the current leaders of the gangs is the, the one they call he he's um Jimmy Javalier or something like that's, that's his name but he's nicknamed barbecue and you and you, I, I I can't sit here in Jamaica, even no matter how much I read and watch in terms of new you know, there are always bass reports in in reporting. <clears throat> but I see where he he well but what is a fact is that he was a former member of the police force. And one of the things he has said is that when he was in the police force, he could only he could only arrest people like him meaning poor people other poor people he they were untouchables who may have been carrying out crimes and he was not allowed to to arrest any of them 
So you can see you now has a, 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 a view of the authorities that is not going to really, that's not positive because he realized all the time it's, it's, you, we are protecting the, 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 um, the upper classes who are doing very well. They are, they live very well in Haiti. And in fact, most of what you see on the television in terms of the violence is not really impacting them as to the extent that um, it's, a, it's impacting poor people. Now, I, one of the things I have not been able to quite come to a conclusion on is, is why a lot of, well, it seems as if a lot of the um, ire of the or the the kidnappings and so on it's not, it's 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 not only people who are well <laughs> it's a cross section of persons but the poor people are not being spared i think that is fair but i think they the whole thing about the gangs what the what the media tends to do especially if they have a plan to to get rid of you or they're trying to they they they, they build stories about you for example the name barbecue they have suggested that it is because he burns people. But yet, they, it, is, it has been proven that he had that nickname from he was a, a youth, from he was a teenager. And it had to do with the fact that his mother, his mother sold in, on the street and sold meat. So you, you can't believe everything you read. And yet, whatever you read, and if you think this is more plausible, you still have to take it with a grain of salt. Of, of salt. Okay, so these are just some of the situations. Now, I want to mention two other acts, acts that have helped to impoverish, impoverish Haiti. In Reagan's administration, and he came to power in 1980. You might remember that Reagan and Siago came to power just about the same time. And Siago was the first person from a foreign country to visit Reagan. Now, in... In in Reagan's president's presidents in his presidency, there was a swine flu outbreak in the in the Caribbean. Now it seemed to have affected the Dominican Republic side, okay. And the U.S. was worried that it could affect that it could affect um their pig industry, and they forced the Haitians to kill all their pigs. Now the it, it's it, it's just interesting. It kind of doesn't make sense. The Haitian pigs were black. You know, I mean, I come back to why I, I I point that out. So they had to kill all their black pigs, and this was really a source of rev income for the poorer classes. And they were supposed to have been compensated, but the majority of them were never compensated. And this was just because America felt that this might spread to their to their pig industry. So they just told Haiti and said, you know, you have to kill all the pigs. However, they replaced them with, you, you want to guess, white pigs, which were the pigs that they had in the United States. And these pigs were not accustomed to the, the environment and the temperatures and so on in Haiti. And, and, and they didn't do very well. And, and they didn't really stand up to, 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 to the, to the um, conditions in Haiti. And they didn't make it as a, they didn't survive. So Haiti's pig industry got killed. Another one, another example, this one it comes under Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton forced, <laughs> I might as well use the word forced, forced Haiti to lower tariffs. They had tariffs of like 50%. He forced them to lower it to 5%. And then he got rice farmers from Arkansas to, to dump, basically you could call it dumping rice in Haiti. And that destroyed Haiti's rice industry. I understand there's a, there's, if, you, if you Google Haiti, um, um, Clinton apologizes, you might see something about that. Uh, maybe in his latter years, he felt he had really done the wrong thing. But that did, didn't help Haiti's rice industry. So you see a succession of events that have just been guaranteed to make Haiti poor. The people can't get a decent wage. 
yet they're forced to work and they've worked and if they protest they can be shot right and nobody cares nobody can do anything about it um the, and <laughs> their 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 agricultural industry is is ruined to a large extent in fact one of the things that is was noticed about haiti and it and it, if you if you look at haiti and the dominican republic you will see on the dominican republic side you'll see green green um forestry or you know you'll see that on the haitian side you will see land that has been bear, bore, bear, laid bare because they chopped down the trees. Now, I used to hear that they used to chop down the trees to make charcoal. And we kind of say, well, you know, oh, so that's all. But I understand that it started even earlier because that was one of the things they had to earn. They had, the, the timber that they had was partially what they had to, to use to earn to help to pay the reparations that France demanded, right? So, so there's a different perspective on that. And in the beginning, I did mention Motty Perkins. I don't know if I explained why I mentioned him. Why I mentioned him is that when I used to listen to him, as I did say as much as that he never had anything good to say about Haiti. In fact, he used to use Haiti as an example that black people cannot run anything, right? And at the time, he never said one word about Haiti having to pay reparations to France. Now, he always came across as a person who was well-read. So I cannot believe that he didn't know that. I cannot believe that he didn't know that. But he never ever said to his audience, he never ever said to his audience, which would have been, ex which would have been a partial explanation as to the conditions that Haiti was going through that Haiti had to pay reparations of, of equivalent of 20 over $20 billion to France. No, no mention of that. And I'm saying that if you, if you are trying to educate and he would pride himself with being, with, with trying to educate his audience, no, he, he didn't find it in his, in his heart to, to explain that side of it. So that is why I mentioned, that's really why I mentioned um, um, Perkins. So, Fast forward to today, the gangs have become more powerful, and there's an argument as to whether we should be calling them gangs. But I've seen Haitians overseas on, 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 on documentaries saying that these are criminals, and I, I can't stay here and, 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 and hold a different view. Maybe he's right. Maybe he's right. But it seems as if they have a they, they they want something better for the country. I think they want something better for their country. And the way forward is is really going to be a ticklish one. They wanted the resignation of um Ariel Henry. They have gotten that. And um you know everybody has said you see the thing about Ariel Henry, he was never elected. He was appointed as prime minister by the previous president, Moise, who was the one who was killed recently in his own bedroom. All right. He, I think by some Colombian. We don't even know the full story about that. But he was the one who was. But he had appointed him as prime minister just prior, fairly sh a short period before he was killed. And since that role was part of the the government in a sense he is kind of like an acting president but he 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 is not it's a, almost an illegitimate presidency because of, for, for a number of reasons but he was never ever elected never never ever ran for an election so they they and, and even in the two years that he has been there when he was promising that he would have held elections um i, I think that should have been earlier um, I can't remember what what the promise was, but it was certainly earlier than the current time. He he never got around to to trying to hold any elections, so they definitely wanted him out, and it's just a succession of issues. I I I, I won't even mention the earthquakes and the hurricanes that have piled more misery on the Haitian people, but those are the only things I can't blame on the US and on 
France. But but there's another country I, I learned recently that also has their finger in it. And that's Canada. I don't know how many of you know. When when Aristide was whisked away and, and, and taken to, 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 to the Congo, it it was Canada was involved. Canada was involved in that, as well as the US, of course. So you know, and, and one could argue that Canada has factories in Haiti. I mentioned the t-shirt one, and I'm sure there are others. So they have an interest. But it seems as if the objective of the West is to try, okay, so we do, so slavery has been abolished. What's the next best thing we can do? Let's capture this country. They have a lot of black people. We, 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 they're, they're not slaves, technically. But we can force them to work for substandard wages, and we will keep them doing that for as long as it can, as, as long as they can, because they have no way of basically freeing themselves from, from this misery. There's really no way, unless with the cooperation of, of the West. And so, whereas, for example, in Africa, and look at what is happening in Africa, and I, I like to focus on West Africa. I think I see a way out for Africa in terms of coming to terms with a kind of um in terms of improving their way of life and their standard of living because of all the minerals they have. But Haiti, don't forget, Haiti has gold. Haiti also has iridium, which is a key a key element in the new technological wave that is going around. So Haiti does have resources. And, but will they be allowed, you know, even this recent visit by the Secretary of State, Blinken, and the, 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 the Africa, the, the CARICOM leaders, I am not so sure, well, <laughs> it, it, it's really interesting to see what, what their proposals are, but it, can it work? If they don't come to some compromise with the with the gangs, the the leader barbecue, he he has formed a coalition called the G nine, that that is one group, but that's not all the gangs. There are others. And what I see right now is that nobody wants Haiti to really come from under the foot of the West. They want that cheap labor. You know, cheap labor in the Asian in the Asian world. Is, is, is rapidly becoming uh, non-existent. In other words, as those countries develop, wages rise, and it's no, no longer, they're no longer making their, 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 building their economy on cheap labor. So you need Haiti. You need, the West needs Haiti. And that's what Haiti is. Can you imagine if Jamaica had become the source of cheap labor? I remember even when we had the, what do you call it now? What we are done by Freeport, uh, not Freeport, um, yeah, by Tinsipen, that area where they had this, um, yeah, um, seven right, 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 free, right, Freeze exactly, it. right. And <laughs> I remember, um, we, we, we were kind of agitating now that about wages, and we allowed unions, I think, we had, I think, we, I think. I think we were able to force unions in there, but uh, you know we were not in the in the position where we were going to just sit down and say, you know, whatever you pay us, and there's no, you know, they don't have to pay minimum wage. I don't remember what the conditions were, but I do remember a lot of agitation about wages. But Haiti, Haiti has no voice, and the leaders. When he had Aristide, he was probably the most progressive president who Haiti has ever had in terms of really trying to look out for the people. But no, he he wanted France to pay reparations and he wanted to double the minimum wage. So he had to go. Now, I think I'll, I'll pause at this stage and, and, and see what kind of interaction anybody from the floor would like to make. Uh, you know, you might want to elaborate. You might have some information that I didn't haven't covered i have other stuff in my notes but i think that's a point at which i could pause and invite the the our audience to to contribute 
Oh, a hand is up. Um, I can't make out your name, but you are the only hand oh, up. So yes, tell me. Right. This is Go DP. Ahead. Go ahead. The, but you're, you're on point in terms of what you have said. And I see you have done a lot of research. Now, as I had indicated earlier, right after the earthquake, uh, being a contractor, mm -hmm. I went down there, you know, my team. Yeah. I took down some Jamaican workers to see how we could, you know, help the country and also help ourselves, most naturally. Yes. And boy, my discovery is that you have 280. Mm -hmm. You have what you call the very rich mm -hmm. and the very poor. I was shocked to know that I go some places in Haiti and I couldn't believe that you have that sort of, you know, establishment. I, yeah. I recall going to a hotel and believe you me, no hotel in Jamaica is as nice <laughs> as the hotel that I went to. I thought at one point that you probably couldn't get, you know, get your food. You go to certain supermarkets and you swear that you're in Miami. Believe me when I tell you. That is the kind of experience. And uh, I, I was exposed to the same kind of chaos that, well, not as bad as what is taking place now. Because I remember we are doing some work for Digicel. Because Digicel is one of the biggest employers in Haiti. And I suppose they, are, they still are. And they have done a lot for Haiti. And I remember we were doing some some work for Digicel. And I we my team, we went we went out of town to do some projects. And believe you me, I remember the day which I we checked into a hotel and we went to this store to, to retrofit. And the same day we heard that <laughs> riot in Haiti. And I tell you something. We left immediately to try to get back to the hotel. And we were probably about 10 minutes away from the hotel. We reached the first roadblock. And believe you me, we could not cross. You know, you're told that don't you dare <laughs> try, <laughs> try pull that barrier. So, you know, I, I spent, myself and my team spent 10 days at that location. One set of clothes. So, you know, you have ten, to be... Ten, 10 days? 10 days. You have to be <laughs> one <of> clothes <laughs> in the night. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, that is serious. I tell mm. somebody, I, I, I have never eaten egg and mackerel. <laughs> So much in my life. <laughs> but <laughs> that that was an experience. And I, I tell you something, man. The the day the we heard that you can move. I my team, we just took the next flight out. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we went back to our base and we took the next flight out. So how long were you actually in Haiti? Uh, how two long? Years. I was oh, there two for years. Because I, I, I tell you, the time when the, the riot came about <laughs> was when Martali, you remember that, that singer, when they had the election and he wasn't announced as the winner. And that is how they are, you know. If the person who, who they want to be president, <laughs> you know, did not win, war. <laughs> and I remember... We, it was December because we had actually planned to, we normally leave out about the 22nd or so of December. That thing happened somewhere about, probably about the 10th, uh, you know, I think mm. around about the 10th or the 15th, we were able to get back to Port-au-Prince. And I tell you something, man, we leave immediately. The first <laughs> flight out, <laughs> I think it was probably the following day because it was said, you know, that they're going to have another runoff. And knowing that if the runner still don't work, 
it's probably gonna be worse. Yes. Yeah, man. Right. So that is the kind of thing, man. But when you travel to the countryside, I hear to do you know, it's nice. It is. Bad. Yes. Yeah. And when you hear <laughs> talk, and the the same history you have mentioned, and you hear about why all the Americans and these people come and them just rob the country of you know their 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 the minerals and all these things. You know, yes. because yet he's not poor. You know, the other thing too is that when I travel from from Haiti to Damre, because we have to buy a lot of stuff in Damre, and when you when you drive, especially when you drive, because sometimes we fly, sometimes we drive, and when you drive across that border, you cannot believe it. And when you hear that the history is that Haiti used to control Damre. It is shocking to see the difference. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Yeah, I, I want to bring in somebody else, but that, that's right. It, it was for about 22 years, Haiti controlled mm -hmm. the whole the whole of Hispaniola. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's correct. In the earlier days, though. You, you anything else you have to add? No, man, that's it for now. Okay. That Thanks is... for that. I'm, I'm glad that at least we have somebody who has been there you know, and at least see, even though it's not the current period, at least they can give us a perspective. Um, I see David Dawkins has a hand up. Hi, good night. Good night, David. Um, a quick question. Well, first of all, really enjoyed your, your presentation. Extremely edifying. Um, I've never been to AC, but I've flown over it after the rains. Mm -hmm. That's red dirt. I've seen the, the sea. You sound a little you sound a little muffled. I don't know if it's the the proximity of your mic or something. Let's see if we can get a little clearer. Got it, yeah. I've flown over it and I've seen the red dirt. And um I I wondered why is it that they would have cut down, you know, why the deforestation? Yes. I really ask God for your, your presentation and for that explanation. Yes. Um, and I really had to use it as a payback method. Um, my question, though, is the way forward. I'm noting, noticing that the, the UN, um, they have rounded up troops again, this time to be led by the Kenyans. And given the um, perhaps, what would you call it, hostility or the hostile nature of the Kenyans, do you think that they will make a difference or they will just, um, could they pound eight, eight into submission? Uh, well, I don't, I don't, all right, and you said second, go ahead, finish, finish first. Um, I think it's the U.S. who recently donated or some amount has been approved. Pledge, pledge. One of mm -hmm. million dollars, but it says for logistical support. Okay. Which means they won't be building roads. Well, in my mind, they won't be building. It's not for development of the country. Um, I'm wondering if that logistical support is to back the army, to back the, the yeah. UN no. um, forces. Okay. Okay. The history of the US in, Can in, in Haiti. Is, is not to build any not to build up any infrastructure. In fact, if you look at if you look at what has happened in African countries, um, especially the ones, in fact, South Africa is different. I'll just use an example. South Africa is different because the whites were live planned to live there and they lived there. Okay. So you had a lot, you had good infrastructure in South Africa. But in the countries where the whites didn't really necessarily plan to live, the only good roads were the roads from the mines to the port, the, you know, you need good roads to transport from the mines to the port or anything that really helped them to extract and take out what they want. That's where they would build infrastructure. I've heard it said that the only thing that America has built in Haiti of any is, is, is a prison, it's a prison, you know? So I, I don't think, I, and, and basically I think that the hundred million or so on that Blinken spoke about is probably to support the military effort. Now, I don't think that one of the reasons they, they had actually approached Mexico, they had actually approached Brazil, I think they had actually approached Canada 
and maybe they had actually approached I don't know, I'm sure about the Caribbean countries. And they have been they're getting a lot of no's. One of the reasons why Kenya is 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 seems willing is because Kenya needs the funds that they would earn from something like this. That is one of the things that I've read. Kenya needs the funds. And but but it has been challenged in the courts in Canada, Ken, in Kenya, because they say that a police force is not under their constitution is not allowed to 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 well let's say fight if you want to use the word fight outside of its borders so i'm not sure if that has been settled you know but that, but we still hear that the thousand policemen from kenya are supposed to come on board and as to whether caricom countries are supposed to be kicking in a number i don't know i you know i, I, I guess we'll hear we'll hear that later but the thing is, it does appear that, okay, some form of order needs to be restored. Some form of order needs to be restored. But I don't think it's a case of, 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 of they also, America also doesn't want to have any boots on the ground. They don't want to have any boots on the ground. And that is also another reason why they want it. And, and um, you mentioned some about the UN. I should have, there's something I should have included. Which I have my, my notes on that too. There have been UN peacekeeping forces in Haiti in the period be between the American occupation and, and the present time, which really wreaked havoc on Haiti. You know, there were complaints and, 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 and evidence that showed that these people were raping because the babies are there now to show okay um and they they really played have wreaked havoc in haiti and in fact one of the things they were responsible for a cholera outbreak in haiti that killed over 10,000 haitians and and and, and over 800,000 people got sick and that's because they were defecating in the river that was that was used as one of Haiti's main water supply, water sources supply. So, you know, and and I know the reason why the UN was brought into it is, is that America didn't want it to look like another American occupation. So they 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 devised, you know, you can always devise methods so that um it looks like it's a UN sanctioned thing when really. It was just the U.S. again, but using it and also the U.N., the U.S. getting the U.N. to pay for it rather than them, although they are one of the contributors to, to the U.N., so I guess some of their money would have to be in it anyway. But that's the kind of thing that happens. So that cholera outbreak was, was devastating. Over 10,000 Haitians got killed, you know, as a result of it. So, you know, the, somebody has to really want to help Haiti. Somebody has to really want it. Then they do need help. They do need help because the they have been still. deprived. Yes, please go the, ahead. The yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, Lloyd. Yes, go ahead, Lloyd. Thank you for that very, very good um, historical review of Haiti. I I have come to be involved in Haiti from a personal point of view of conducting business there. And having Haitians around me in the companies that I represent out of the U.S. Um, by virtue of their birth and migration to the United States. So I have a very intimate understanding and feel of Haiti. Um, my last trip there was just the month before the pandemic was declared. I haven't been back. Mm -hmm. And we can sit here all evening and talk about the historical context of what has caused Haiti to be where it is. Mm -hmm. But like Johan and Dawkins, I'm interested in where we go from here. Yes. And I have found that the greatest hindrance to any nation progressing is the people themselves. I just want to put that in perspective. Now, I sell lumber, plywood, and building materials throughout the Caribbean. I'm responsible for Jamaica, Trinidad, Guyana, and Haiti for two 
multinational companies that I, I represent. And the quality that is accepted throughout the Caribbean. Now I landed in Haiti and I tried to sell the big players. And I'm talking about players, just for you to understand, and I say big players, of the size of a tankwell. size of a Home Depot in the U.S. Because as the other Barnett said, who lived there for two years, the gap between rich and poor in Haiti, you cannot imagine. You cannot imagine, Stewie, mm -hmm. the gap between rich and poor. Mm -hmm. I stayed at the Hilton on my last occasion. If you step outside the gate of the Hilton, you are in a squalor, you are in a ghetto, similar to what we would we'd look at as West Kingston, right mm -hmm. beside each other, the rich and the poor. But you have 12-foot fences with razor wire on the top separating mm -hmm. the properties. Mm -hmm. But that is the extent to which you, rich and the poor coexist in Haiti. Now, I try to sell them the product that I have sold all my life. And they looked at me and asked me, am I crazy? And this is not one dealer in it. Am I crazy? They said, we can't afford to buy that. We are looking at number three or number four quality lumber. And I said to them, but if you buy number three or number four quality lumber, the disasters that come at you uh, are going to blow that down. Yes. And okay. so they are generating within their own businesses, substandard material to sell. And I'm glad a contractor is here who has worked down there. He must have had a serious issue with finding good quality material. And when I try to explain to them that it makes no sense to buy that material because the next hurricane I come to is going to blow down those wooden houses. They said, that's all the people can afford. So you have a cycle. Mm -hmm. that is very difficult to break because of the socioeconomic and the the, the, the actual, um, you know, uh, spending but they, poor. They don't, they spending don't want poor. To, but they, they don't want to increase the minimum wage, so how do people are going to be able to afford anymore? And which is why I say, you know, we have to look at the future. The future has mm -hmm. to be any troops that land down there, wherever they come from, a huge humanitarian package after a company any type of insurgent or any type of assistance, if you want to put it in a nice way. Mm -hmm. It cannot be that they go in there, squash the gangs, kill them, yes. yeah. and, and move on because yeah. they're going to rise up back again. Yes, exactly. They're going to rise up back again. I agree. So it has to be dealt with in a terms of an economic package over, over 50 years because it's going to take that time to build back it, you know. Mm -hmm. As you said, Haiti is a country that is rich with resources. So they have to they have to build it back over a period of time. And and I don't know, the infighting and corruption and all that that are and have been exhibited by their leadership from the Duvaliers come down. I don't know if you're sad that because I'm telling you that it is it is ingrained, ingrained in the system here. In but green. then, but but then, uh, if you if you think about when Aristide was there, Aristide was not a criminal, right? Aristide was genuinely looking out for the people. But because what he wanted to do was inimical to the interests of of of, of the West, he had to go. Yeah. So you know, so and this, is I, why I, I'm I, saying, this is why I'm saying that you have a challenge because mm -hmm. because the West will always have a hand in there, and the West. Mm -hmm. You remember one of the reasons, as you pointed out earlier, you know, why the U.S. was interested in Haiti, you know. They wanted to put a naval base there, you know. Yes, yes. They wanted to put a naval base there. Yes. Because yes. of the very threat of, 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 um, of Cuba. They didn't want any more um, communists in their backyard. And as you said, that's why they supported um, the that regime, the Valier, because yeah. he was pro mm -hmm. pro um. Uh, well, anti-communist. Well, yeah, yeah, right. Mm. Just totally against the the, the, um, the communist um, way of life. Mm -hmm. so 
you know, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a it's a, a story that we're going to going to be looking at for years to come, unless and until real real money is put in that place mm -hmm. with a plan how to bring it back. Because yes. Haiti, Haiti was one of the one of the the, the, the gems of the Caribbean in yeah. the time days, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Gem of the Caribbean. You talk about Santo Domingo, um, mm. Dominican Republic next mm. to <laughs> was yeah. the gem of the Caribbean. But I, it, it can it be a just like Cuba? Yeah, yes, that's true. Cuba is superior too. Thanks for your contribution, DP Lloyd. Um, yeah, I'm I'm glad again somebody who has been there and has at least some exposure directly, you know. And um, glad for what you have been able to add to the discussion. Appreciate it. I I really I'm I'm I I'm really okay. There's some hands up, so let me not go to anybody else in terms of. Uh, David, you you wanted to come right, before I come back to you, David. I see your hand up, still up. Let me go to three six seven seven three eight, and I'll show who that is. If I may, DP, Stu, not to, to cut you off, but um, can we um keep the the questions to the next five minutes? We want to keep the meeting tight, so no, I I really want to explore this, Stephen. I really want to explore this, and if people have their hands up, I yes, need sir. to have them. All right, yes, so I'm three. Sure. Let me just take three six seven, please. Yeah. Well, I'll be very short. My name is June McMillan. I'm calling you from Trinidad and Tobago. Hi, June. <laughs> Hi. Go ahead. Go just, ahead. I was to just talk about my, my involvement with Haiti um, to my church, the Moravian Church. The Jamaican con, um, province has responsibility for the church in Haiti. But through my church in Trinidad, we try to assist when there was this big hurricane the last time. And as it's, the previous speaker said, the problem with Haiti is the Haitian, you know, the officials, the middle management officials are so corrupt. You cannot get anything really done. And you have you have some high level people. Sorry, is there, when, is that, sorry, is there a raid in your back? Is it, is there a raid in your, in your area? I'm hearing no, some, I'm, or is it somebody else? It's gone? Yes, it's gone. Okay, continue. Thank you. Well, did you hear anything I said? Yeah, man, I, I, we could hear you. It was just a little disturbing. That's all. Continue. Yeah, so even now, we're trying to assist. We cannot find some of our members. They tried to kidnap a young doctor we've had there, and he's on his way. He said the last I spoke to him a few days ago, he was on his way to Mexico to try to get to the States. I tried up to just before this meeting to see if I could reach him and nothing. His brother is a resident pastor there. They, they tried to kidnap him. They got in an accident. His wife got her feet injured and they cannot find them. So I don't know what is happening there. There's really civil unrest. There's an NGO that has assisted there. We try to get food to people and we have no word from on the ground. So I'm just reporting that. Okay. Thanks for that. You know, some of the NGOs, operating in Haiti do not have a very good reputation. In it, if, if you go back to it, the 2010 earthquake, a lot of the money that was supposed to pass through them, uh, you know, I can't, I can't sit here and, and, and stay definitively about that, but I've just read a lot that um, suggests that not all of them were really, you know, the money, a lot of what comes in ends up helping the people who don't need the help. You know. Anyway, thanks, thanks for your contribution, June. Glad you could join. Let me take um DP. I can't make out the name so good. I have to read. You Is can't it... make up my name. DP Donnell. Donnell. Donnell, yes, Donnell. That's Donnell. I'll come back to you. Um uh, if, if you uh, yeah, let me deal with Donnell. Go ahead. Yeah, man. All right. One other thing with EAT as well. Voodoo. Voodoo is one of the very Serious, serious, serious thing with it with it. I mean, they they take it very serious. I recall an experience where we were doing some work and we went to this particular establishment, and the gentleman had something over his door, and he tells you that no Asian dare go inside there. And that is much to do with voodoo. 
I remember we also had an experience where we fired a Haitian worker. And could we get somebody else to do the work? Another Haitian, no. They refused from engaging doing that work because <laughs> matter of voodoo. And we they fear Jamaican, I must tell you. Because you say Susumba is something that they use as part of their ritual. And, and you know, eat it. they can eat Susumba. So based on that, they're afraid of us. And I remember they, they also have what you call a voodoo day. It's like when you have a holiday, a day, you know, a Christmas day or that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They, have a, they have a day that is a voodoo holiday. And when I see the people them dress up in them skull and, you know, whatever, you know, they tell you how serious they are about, about their voodooism. All right. So that- just to in, give you an insight. Okay. Let me, okay. Let me just make a quick response to that. You also have to be uh, careful because s- stories are written about when when you're trying to de when you're trying to keep down, let's use a simple word, keep down a set of people. A, a, a lot of things you do, you you create stories about them that and I'm not saying food is a story. I, I know it exists, but I'm saying you create stories about them that help help to when you take action against these people you have sympathy people sympathize that that you did the right thing now for example there are stories around there there are stories out there about Haitians um, being cannibals there are stories out there and and as far as I'm I've seen not Nagoso right but these are things that are filtered into the press the voodoo is a religion Voodoo is a religion, and, and there are a lot of religions that are weird, weird in terms of what we are accustomed to. All right, I don't know enough about about Haiti or, or about Voodoo to be able to cast any judgment, and you're and you're only make, making some observations, which is fine. But I'm just saying that sometimes these things are played up in order to show how either primitive or how less than worthy, how less than worthy you are. So that when I take action against you, nobody cares. In fact, when when Woodrow Wilson, when when the okay, when the occupation of US took place, one of the reasons that they gave is that you are so poor and unworthy, unworthy that somebody was going to take over your country anyway, and we didn't want it to be somebody else. It's better we do it. That was the Americans' posture, right? So they didn't so you have to be just a little bit careful about what you accept and a, and a quick thing about mandela i don't know if you all know this but mandela was released in 1990 or thereabouts and he he became president in 94 and it wasn't until 2008 that mandela's name was removed from the list of terrorists, terrorist watch list in the United States. All right. So, so they are not averse to branding you if they feel like it as, as, as so on, no matter what you have done to show otherwise. I, I, I just throw that out there. So how you watch the, one thing I like about the current situation, I don't have to defend on what comes on, um, the, the traditional news outlets. No, I'm not saying that everything you read and that it comes from the non-traditional is necessarily factual. But you can tend to, if you if you watch a, a group, if you watch a number of them, you can kind of sort through and see what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. All right. Okay. If there are no hands are up now, so if um if that's it. If if last call, if anybody has anything else to throw in, um, you can do so. But um, we, we're about to close because I don't see any any more hands up. And just let me just look over my little thing in terms of there's anything else that I should have just thrown in. But I think I we got in most of what I had um I had prepared. But God knows why. What has been done to Haiti over the years? Are these people who are trying to you know, defend themselves. I, I'm just, I'm, I just wish that 
the stories about the poor people getting hurt, you know, I don't understand that part of it. And that, that is my main concern when I, when I hear about them. And even if some of them seem like they really have, um, they really want something good for the country, I'd still need an explanation as to why some of the poor people are getting hurt. That, that's, how I would, that's how I would end it. That, that much I, have, I don't have an answer for. But um, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, President, President-elect Stephen, back to you. Thank you, DP. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Most appreciated. Um, always, um, I, uh, I, I, there is no um, vote of thanks, but I think the wealth of information that you have shared with us here this evening, um, we're totally in, in, in awe and in gratitude for, for sharing that information. Um, and, uh, we hope that this will also, con that the conversation will continue um, within Kiwanis and outside of Kiwanis to, to try and find a solution to the Haiti situation. We're all, as you hear in all of the participants' um, feedback and their voices, we, wa we want the best for Haiti as a country and whatever we can do from our side to make that happen, we should, as a country and as individuals. So again, um, on behalf of the club, um, I know you're internal, but thank you again for a, a wonderful, insightful, knowledgeable um, presentation on this topic uh, as usual. So thank you for your, your, your time and your, your research and your participation. Um, President Newton, I noticed that you're, you're also in on the meeting. Do you want to um, take over at this point or do you want me to continue? Welcome, President Newton. You're muted, Newton, so you can unmute. So while President Newton re responds, I did see Kiwani and Zuri on, online. Um, he is a designated sergeant arms. So um, mm -hmm. Kiwani and Zuri, can you, your, the microphone is yours for your sergeant oh. arms, it is. Go, go Thank ahead. You. Thank Here you, President so good evening to my Kiwanis family. So today we're going to be doing some, I, I, I call it useless information, but I just want to, want, to, want to pick your brain to see. What do you call a man that has nobody and no nose? Nobody knows. Nose. <laughs> and tell me, why does 10 plus 10 equal 11 plus 11? 10 plus 10 is 20, and 11 plus 11 is 22. In the spirit of this week, champs... You need to pay for that one. You need to pay for that one, Zuri. I have a great DP, Chris. So, DP, Chris, are you, you take the fan on my behalf. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. So, DP Chris, you'll start the charges with $500 this evening. Oh. Don't worry, it's going to be doubled because I had already planned that in the spirit of champs and celebration of schools that we're going to do a blanket fine this evening of $500. The LG <laughs> Willie, don't worry yourself, you also have a double and you already know why. <clears throat> have a great evening, everybody. Thank you very much, Sarge Zuri. Um, entertaining as usual. Um, and please make everybody pay your, your fans so that it can contribute towards our k um administrative fund. Um, even though we're meeting virtually, please, please contribute. Thank you again, k and Zuri. Um, we do have notices and announcements and I'm going to ask, first of all, DP Chris, I mentioned it earlier in the meeting, DP Chris, so I'm not sure if you heard. Uh, obviously, our 60th anniversary events for um, Sunday and Tuesday. But I, I think we, we have a much larger audience now. We have about 35 persons present. So I'm going to hand the microphone to you to, to share with us some the Kiwanis Club of Kingston's plans as the first notice and an announcement. Over to you, DP Chris. Thank you. Thank you, President Alex Steven. Um, fellow Kiwanians, you know, this is an important week 
in the life of Kiwanis in Jamaica. As on Sunday, March 24th, it will be the 60th birthday of the Kiwanis Club of Kingston. And as you all know, the Kiwanis Club of Kingston was the very first Kiwanis Club in Jamaica. And as such, March 24th will mark 60 years of Kiwanis in Jamaica. And to mark that occasion, we will be having a church service at the Boulevard Baptist Church on Sunday at 9 a.m. And I issue an invitation to all Kiwanians who are here and on any support of Kiwanis to join us at the Boulevard Baptist Church on Sunday where we will be giving thanks for all the blessings that the Lord has bestowed on us over the past six years. Then did, on Tuesday, oh, did Chris, um, time, time. Make it's at 9 a.m., oh. which is the time of the church service. Okay. Then on Tuesday, we will be having a special club meeting at the Police Officers Club, beginning at 7 o'clock. And at this special meeting, you know, we will be using the opportunity of not only celebrating the past where Kiwadis is concerned, but really looking at the future, where we should be going. And to assist us in that process, we have three persons. We have Vice Governor, Candidate Sharon Williams. We have Governor-elect Ham Rod DeWhite. And we also have KI Vice President Candidate um, KIT Hope Marks. So we'll have three of three of our Kiwanians who are pushing forward to represent the Kiwanis movement on a more global stage. And they will be sharing, giving their perspective on the way forward. And the meeting is a face-to-face -face meeting. It will not be live streamed because we want to see you and you, you'll get the opportunity to interact one-on-one -on -one with our, our guests, as well as the fact that you know, being a celebratory occasion you know, we'll we'll make sure that we have refreshments, we'll have entertainment, and of course, 50-50, and all at a cost of $2,000 per person. And we hope that we'll have a full house to celebrate with us on March 26th, Tuesday, March 26th, at the Police Officers Club, commencing at 7 p.m. Thank you, President Elect Stephen. Thank you, DP Chris. Um, um, thank you also, um, DP Chris. DP Chris um, acts as the chairman for our 60th anniversary celebration. So, if there are any further questions, please direct them to Chris or or to President Newton, and we'll be able to get that information to you. But we look forward to seeing everybody who is here this evening, attending both the church service as well as the. The, next, the club meeting, which is next week, Tuesday, in person, right? Lots of food, lots of fellowship, and lots of Kiwanis information. Um, I'm going to ask DLG Willie um, if there are any other notices from Kiwanis Club of Kingston, um, as well as any interclubbing opportunities. Thank you, President-elect Stephen. Uh, just a reminder that this week is been celebrated at Billers Club Beach. It started with a church service at Thackthorpe Methodist Church on Sunday. And today, in fact, members of Michael Circle K went down to Almaton Primary where they painted the, the bathrooms as part of our activities. Just a reminder 
ECNC District Convention, May 16th to 18th. Early registration is gone. Now the cost to register now is three. Three hundred and eighty Canadian dollars. I mean, it's from the sixteenth to the eighteenth. Uh, closer to home. L.G. Desmond spoke to Andrew Jenner meeting in his Kimwana's education this evening. The proposed date for the Andrew Jenner meeting is May the seventh. The notice of meeting to that will be circulated to members after I've, we've had discussion with the chairman of membership growth, DLG Stan Dunwell. And so far as those are noticed as announcements, but so far as in the clubs, I know Papine is having their meeting and to which they have invited us at 3.30 on Thursday, March 21st, on the same day in Montego Bay, club has invited us to the fireside chat at 6 p.m. with distinguished Lieutenant Governor Exton Sharon Williams, who is a candidate, as we know, for governor. Uh, President elect Stephen, those are the announcements I have for the time being. You may want to just quickly ask anybody yeah. inside. I'm a visiting yeah. club if they have any announcements for me. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, DLG Willie. Um, we do have a number of Kiwanian clubs that are joining us this evening. Um, we, I know that there's Montego Bay, there's Papine, there's Portmore, there's New Kingston. Um, so I'm opening the mic if any of those clubs or the delegation would like to share any announcements at this time. The microphone is all yours. Please and good night. Good night. Good night. Who is this? Past President Robert, go ahead. Oh, yes. Um, one go quick ahead. quiz. Um, your, your anniversary meeting on Tuesday. Um, I, I will be allowed to attend that one. Sh should I say so at first before I announce my, my meeting? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. It's an open invitation to all Kiwanians. It's a celebration of this Kingston, but the whole Kiwanis movement in Jamaica. Yeah, man. So I, I, I definitely be yeah, there. Man, yeah, man. I look out for you, so. Remind you yeah. of course. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's that's okay. Um, Kiwanis Club of West St. Anne's will be having their Zoom meeting tomorrow. Um, we are getting a guest from overseas who will be talking about wellness and health. And the time is 7 p.m. I will send over the Zoom link and fly out over to um, DP Stewart and DLG Willie. Okay. So 7, 7 p.m. tomorrow. 7 p.m. tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any other announcements from any other Kiwanian clubs? Going once, going twice. Right. All right, it's three gone. Times. Three times. You're out of here. But thank you. Um, we're moving on with the program. Um, I notice I think DP Marcel is here. He's going to share some um, thought of the week with us. Over to you, DP Marcel. Thank you, fellow Q audience. Good night. Quick one. As we are accustomed in the Jamaican, in the standard Queen, not Queens anymore, it's the King's language. <laughs> and uh, the Jamaican language as we're abandoning world. The fact is, people who base their self-worth on being right about everything prevent themselves from learning from their mistakes. Oh, hear me now. If you big up yourself all the while because you think that you're right about everything you know, you prevent yourself from learning from all the mistakes that you make. And that prevents you from really bigging up yourself. Thank you. <laughs> me, thank, me thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, DP Marcel. Very timely. <laughs> I like that one. Um, so yes, ladies and gentlemen, Kiwanians and guests, um, final call if there's any other announcement or any other um, queries that you, you'd like to have. Now is the time to raise it as we, we draw our meeting to an end. We thank you all for your attendance and your participation. Again, we encourage you to come on Sunday, Boulevard Baptist, 9 a.m. or Tuesday, next week, Tuesday, usual time at Police Officers Club for a special meeting. Um, those are the two things that Kiwanis Club of Kingston will have, and we look forward to your participation. And if there is nothing further, um, I call this meeting to a close and ask that. Uh, Stephen, let me just make an announcement. Oh, oh yes, go ahead, DP Stewart. Um, because the, the, the anniversary committee is gonna have a meeting following directly following this meeting. Yes. So I won't be able to play any after music. Any music, any after after meeting. Um. Yeah. So YouTube videos. Me, yes. Let me know. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um. We are used. Used to DJ still um playing some really good music after the meeting, but there is another um planning committee meeting right after. So for this week there won't be any. Um so just bear with us. You understand the circumstances. Anything else from anybody else? So as I was saying before, I I, I now call this meeting to a close and ask that we raise a toast to Kiwanis International and Jamaica land we love. Cheers and thank you. Good night, everyone.